And welcome back to the LEC playoffs as Rogue take down Misfits in the round one of Spring Playoffs and Comp. Thank you so much for joining me after your game. Congrats on Thank taking you. down Misfits today. Uh, you came off dominating, honestly, throughout the whole series. And it, I mean, it makes sense, especially given the fact that all the players said you were confident in the fact that you could take down Misfits. But I want to ask, um, what made you so sure that their style would reach their limits in best of five scenarios? Uh, well, I feel like people, like f uh, for example, the regular season, there's always people talking about us of playing one-dimensional style and a lot of this, but I feel like Misfits are kind of the same. Okay. And they had some specific picks that they used to play the whole season, like Jinx. So that's why it was out. We just felt like it was really comfort for him, and we wouldn't feel that threatened if he played anything else, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Zeri, level, uh, Zeri game one was kind of annoying, but then we kind of figured out what we should do. So yeah, pretty much we just targeted their, uh, we felt like their weakest points, uh -huh. and we banned some OP jumps, let's say, and we just played out the game, yeah. Yeah, played that really well uh, indeed for you guys. Quick question about game three, maybe? What happened there? Uh, well, it was, it was legit one move that we did wrong and we lost the game. I feel like when we went on top and uh, Odoamne got really sunk. Yeah. And the thing is, we committed a lot of uh, numbers on top, like both Zarvan and Nautilus, right? And our goal was to just make Jace viable for the game, but then after what happened, both me and him were really doomed, kind of, because I also lost two waves bot because yeah. their jungle and support fully rotated to bot because their top was already winning. So that's pretty much some up, I think. And also, I feel like we gave LeBlanc to Veto, which I think he's really good with the sump. But yeah, I mean, we banded game four, so it was no problem. Happens, uh, honestly. But how hard is it to reset after a game like this? You had the edge, you had the momentum. Uh, I don't know, Vitio picking Akali in the next game, <laughs> last game, we know that he's really good on the champion. Were you confident in your yeah, ability to I mean, I was kind of being chilling, I didn't care, to <laughs> be honest, about game three. And I mean, the Akali, for sure, it's like a highlight sound and it's really hype when people pick it right. But yeah. specifically with their team comp, I felt like it was really bad because they also picked Cannon on fourth pick, right? So they had way too much AP for us. So it was kind of, we were happy to play against. Easy peasy, an easy two to manage. Yeah. You mentioned the bot lane. This has been one of the highlights this morning uh, in the ready check. The fact that lots of ADCs have been nerfed, some yeah. buffed. Have you been surprised by anything today? It felt standard to me. I mean, Zeri feels the same, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, fun fact, to be honest, after the nerfs, uh, like basically after the regular season, we took a week off, right? And everyone went back home and stuff. And then we saw the mini pads, which for me is really not a mini pads because they nerfed the whole bot lane meta. But anyways, so we just thought, okay, Zeri has gotten like three or four nerfs in a row, right? So she should be bad. So we yeah. should not play her. And then, yeah, basically we didn't play her at all on scrims. And now we go three days before we play and we're like, guys, I think that is fucking OP, so let's just play it again whenever it's open. <laughs> well, it worked out well for, for you. Uh, about preparation, maybe, as you said, we had a new patch and especially lots of changes when it comes to the bot lane. How hard is it to prep for best of fives uh, when you don't have any information uh, at all? Because when you, if you show up on stage and you have the wrong read of the meta, it could yeah. just cost you this series. So how hard is it? Uh, well, to start off, I don't feel like we have this issue of yeah. having the wrong meta or something. I feel like, especially me and Adi or Trimby, I think we are like really confident to play whatever the team needs and we can just uh, play something that maybe we haven't played for a month or something, right? But I feel like just we are in that skill individually that we can just play whatever the team needs, right? So I'm really not worried, especially about both meta, even after that mini patch. Feels like you guys understand each other uh, quite well, honestly, looking ahead at playoffs. You tweeted something that I found really interesting, the fact that you were back playing best of five series after, after such a long time. Yeah. Um, you said also that it was special for you playing best of five. Yeah. Could you tell me more about these vibes and what you felt today on stage? I mean, honestly, I, enjoy, I enjoyed my time so much and I feel like I will keep doing this whenever I play, right? Especially on stage. But yeah, about the thing I tweeted, I, I felt like my last best of five might have been in 2019 or something, right? So it's actually been a long time. But I remember just this feeling of even if you lose the, the one game, it really doesn't matter, right? You, you are so hyped to go into the next one and you just uh, reload and refocus. And yeah, it's always uh, really enjoyable to play best of fives. Such a different setting and the best competitive one, of course. Yeah. Quick words about the series tomorrow. You'll be facing the winner next week. Yeah. Rogue, uh, Fnatic G2, who takes it? Uh, well, I would say Fnatic, to be honest. Okay. I feel like... I mean, to be honest, I would rather face Fnatic, even if, in my opinion, they're the better team. I really want to go into that 2v2 with Hapset and Healy and maybe do a verbal agreement with Junglers and they both pass top lane, so we see who's the better bot right now in the league. 
But yeah, I mean, I see Fnatic taking it all yeah. the way. Yeah. That would be a matchup to keep an eye on on the bot lane. But that's the story for next week. Comp, thank you so much for joining me thank for this for interview. Congrats on taking down Misfits today. And stay tuned because we have way more to sell about this series. So back to you, Shocks of PGL. Thank you so much, Lore. Indeed, welcome to the LEC post-game lobby. I'm joined by Treats and Larson, who is on his throne on that side, which is great. Uh, congratulations, Larson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, good stuff. Uh, overall, three and one, I would say pretty clean overall, except for that third game. What do you think it was that made you guys so good today? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. It was really weird games. I felt like the series was so weird. I'm not sure if like from playing it, I was just like chilling. I don't know. It felt... <laughs> I mean, it felt like too easy, somehow, like, mm, not too easy. <laughs> oh maybe my like, God. I mean, that's like BM to say after a win, right? But yes. it was just like weird. It was like, I don't know, I felt like we didn't need to do that much. I felt like they just ran it a bit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. It was really weird. <laughs> I never played such a weird series. I don't know, it feels like I didn't play really. I don't know, it was weird. Okay, uh, but I guess then in the third game, you were not worried at all. I know that you went for the Kaisa mid, which we, you know, we were wondering if it was going to come out. So what's your verdict on the Kaisa mid? Uh, I mean, I kind of cringed it. I got like solo kid, like a yeah. complete noob. It was really cringe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was so shocked, like what I was doing. Uh, but I mean, it's like a bit of a scream terror right now, like Kaiser mid. It's uh, terrorizing quite a bit. So we want to like try it out and uh, well, it didn't succeed, but I'm not sure. It usually it's, it, like works well in scream because it's like scaling well, but and people are like in things. So you get like free kills and then you're like suddenly out of control, but then you play on stage. And my team is not inting and you're not getting free kills and then they're suddenly just not doing anything. So <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, I think we'll see it more and then we'll see how we judge it. Uh, okay. Uh, Treats, um, he said that he thought it was weird for him to judge this series because it seemed like Misfits was kind of giving them a lot. Yeah. Did you see it also that way for at least the three games that they won? Definitely on the wins, I would say that it looked kind of easy from Rogue's perspective. I think it was kind of just farming and taking good fights and they kind of gave the fights away. So. Yeah. It definitely looked like it was a breeze to play uh, from that perspective, from like a fighting perspective. They they messed up a lot of times, so you guys took advantage and it kind of just snowballed, snowballed and then it turned out into a win. So yeah, I would have liked to play this uh, series as well from both <laughs> perspective. Yeah, I don't know, I felt like I wasn't doing much. It's like, I, I felt like I was just chilling. Like between the games, I was trying to hype myself up because it just felt, felt like too easy. So I was like, really, usually I'm a bit, like, a bit nervous. I'm like a bit uh, like, hyped for yeah. the games, but I don't know, like between these games, I was not, I, know, I was really sleeping, kind of. So I was just trying to hype myself up. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah, it may <laughs> maybe it's a bit disappointing because we were also building it up as, like, you know, Vitiao, who is like, hi, uh, everyone's talking about MVP yeah. and whatnot, uh, versus you, who you also had an amazing split. Even though I feel like people haven't talked about you that much, but you were playing really well. It's weird that the series wasn't about mid. Is that maybe what's confusing to you? or? Uh... Not really. I mean, I guess it not much happened mid, yeah? Yeah. Um, I guess not much happened mid. It was not too much. I mean, I was kind of playing out of scaling champs as well, so it was mm. uh, well, hard to do like too much around mid as well. I guess it's that. Like, I played a lot of, well, what I played, like Alcee, Oriana, Kaisa. Lucian. Something else. Lucian. Lucian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that was fun, though. <laughs> but other games were like, kind of scaling champs, so I guess that's why I was sleeping a bit, because, yeah, you can't do as much. Okay, so I think maybe that's the point because we knew how strong uh, VTO could be, but yeah. there was just no opportunity for Misfits to get him rolling. Maybe in this last game, though. Yeah, I mean, I felt like since you're like the stable core of the of your team and VTO is like the explosive guy, it's kind of on them to like start up the fire in mid, right? But it didn't really happen. So I guess you're happy from that perspective. Like your win condition came online, theirs didn't. Um, but otherwise, I think that like VTO didn't have a bad series whatsoever, no. but. He wasn't really online, and he needs to do more for Misfits to win, right? I think that's yeah. the difference. I mean, if they're going to win, he needs to like pop off, right? That's just how, how it is with them. And I guess they didn't pop off. I guess. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, who did pop off, though, was uh, Oduwamne and Malrang a lot in the in the top side in a couple of the games. And yeah. Malrang is actually the player, the Kia player of the series with 50% of the votes. Nice. Um, and yeah, we've been hyping up Malrang a lot. Um, how has he been evolving in the last couple of weeks now that you had even more time to scrim and into the playoffs, you feel? Uh, definitely, we were like uh, flipping some some stuff with uh, Malron was like flipping maybe a bit too much, <laughs> uh, and I think in this series we saw like a more composed Malron. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously still like aggressive, right? And it goes for plays, but it was a bit more composed, I think. With, uh, so that's like an evolve, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you guys noticed it or it's only. Yeah. Uh, what yeah, I, think. yeah. I felt like especially on the Jarvan, 
Uh, he had like not a super easy game to engage, but I felt like he got good angles and didn't die after, which I think can happen a lot on Jarvan, where you just jump in and then <laughs> like trade one for one. Yeah, but yeah. He, he definitely looked a bit more composed than in the regular season, I would say. Yeah, yeah it definitely yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I mean, that, that's how we evolved. Yeah. I mean, I think in the past weeks, especially we've been focusing a bit more on like farming from our ranks, so he's like not <laughs> flipping too much. Uh, <laughs> Which, I mean, I think we saw it today. Uh, I think we saw it a bit today. He was farming a bit more than usual. So it's like nice to see that. Uh, I mean, it's like kind of easy, right, to farm. It's not like complicated. <laughs> yeah. People are like saying, oh, yeah, when players come, like Malrang and Rogue, they just fucked. Uh, <laughs> Malrang just flip ganks and people just read them. Like, they were just not die to flip ganks and it's over for Rogue. But it's like very easy to farm, right? You just like hit camps, you just hit them. And yeah. then you just like go around and base and then the full clear again. Yeah, it's like not, not very easy, complicated, yeah. right? But you're like, saying his jungle is easy. Yeah, it's pretty easy and broken. Uh, I think everyone agrees on that. <laughs> it's I like agree. if I play Young and Solo, I will look to 10 0 every time. And yeah, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah okay, nice. <laughs> uh, OP, yeah. Luckily, we don't have to see that. Um, I do want to ask you about, uh, you know, Misfits did claw that game back, right? Um, and you know the narrative, and you know uh, everything said about Rogue in terms oh, of like yeah. maybe choking <laughs> a little bit or not yeah, being yeah, able yeah. to come back from that. So I'd love to know from your perspective, because you just said, hey, I do get nervous sometimes before games, but with the team composition like it is now, how do you think uh, it's going in, in that front? I think everyone's doing so good today. Like everyone's so calm all the time, and people are like so focused. I bet like there are like, no one nerfs like at all, no nerfs like in any of the games, which is really really nice to see. Because I think in the past years we had like some nerfs. I mean our team environment was pretty bad uh, playoffs last year, like in both playoffs actually. Mm -hmm. And I mean we're, we're, we're way better vibes now, and like it's just trust each other is like so easy to play. But last year we didn't trust each other. Uh, I'm also not sure about this narrative. Like I don't completely agree with it. That we were like playoff inters. You don't have to. Because <laughs> in summer split, we were definitely playoff inters, right? <laughs> uh, but it's also like comes from a different. Uh, the, the problem we had last year is not going to happen this year. It's literally impossible. Uh, we had some very bad environment and we just crumbled when pressure came because uh, people couldn't handle pressure that well, I think. And okay. we just like became very toxic environment, which is definitely not going to happen this year. That's for certain. Uh, and I think like for Spring Pit, we didn't have that bad of a playoff, right? We like went two up to in the final and then got reverse swept, so it that's, was like super close. That's where it also comes from, I guess. But I yeah, mean that's I maybe so, not but, fair. But that's if you go fair. into that Spring Pit, right? Yeah. G2 was the favorite. G2 yeah. was the favorite for Spring Pit to win. And it's like they came first place. And then in summer, G2 into this again after having like a super strong second half to split. So it's like uh, we had like a really bad summer split, right? Where you kinda choked, but there's like other teams, like G2 also run it down, like both, both players, right? So, so if you want to force a narrative, maybe like yeah, go to G2. Like <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want, you want us to force a narrative yeah, about to, G2? Yeah. That's all we do, yeah. Larson. This is oh, great. Yeah, but just make the G choking narrative for G2. Just oh, yeah, take yeah, it yeah, away yeah, from yeah, us. Yeah. Hey, that's fair. By the way, you don't have to agree with the narratives, right? That's the whole point of it. Because, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, we have to find something. If you're playing so good and you're first in a regular season, you know, what else yeah, are we going to talk about? I want to say like my five cent on the matter. I hear it so much, right? I hear it so much. Usually when you hear it like so much, it kind of gets to your head a bit, I think. So I it's our it. fault? Uh, yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I'm just joking. I love um, narratives. I'm just joking. Um, but I mean, I think it also, I remember, I think there was an interview or something or you talked about that specifically with, it was a team atmosphere. I think it was Odo. I can't remember what it was, but yeah. we jumped on that. But yeah. you made us read between the lines good enough when you said it was impossible that it was to happen again because someone isn't on the roster, I guess. That's how I got that. But you can interpret the way you want at home. Uh, I do want to talk to you about something else, which is scrim, scrim culture. Uh, we talked to uh, Oduwamna about it as well. And like he talked about on PGL about like scrim bubbles. And then maybe you have the wrong read on the meta when you come into playoffs. Upset also tweeted, uh, there isn't a single team in EU that's even close to uh, playing in scrims the way they do on stage. So it's really hard getting a similar experience to the competitive games. It's close to a myth in Europe for years. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, it's kind of true, but I think it's like true for other regions as well. Uh, I mean, if you look at Koreans, they're absolutely crazy in scrims. Like, I've never seen more aggressive mid laners than Koreans in scrims. But then you go on stage, and Koreans are usually like known for barely any kills, right? So I wouldn't say it's just like for Europe, you know? It's like, I think Koreans are like way worse, actually. They're psychopaths in scrims. They're absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. They're like so aggressive. They don't care about jungler. They're like only going forward, but on stage, you're like very careful, right? So. I think it's like not only for Europe, I think it's like for most regions. But uh, we have best of ones, unfortunately, so yeah. you don't oh, yeah. get a lot of time. No, I think in general, like, scrims will never be the same as stage. You're practicing for a purpose, right? And if your purpose is to improve an area that you're bad in, you can definitely in scrims, right? That's, that's the byproduct of improving. So 
I think that it kind of depends on your area of, of improvement. Like maybe you're trying new champs and completely running it. Maybe you're trying some early game stuff to like cover your flaws. So I think, yeah, it depends on what you're trying to achieve, but yeah. it can definitely be different. I, I mean, I've never had a team where we play exactly the same on scrims as on stage. Yeah, but that's just naturally going to happen, right? Because there's way more pressure on stage. It's like, yeah. it's, just, it's just how it is. I mean, uh, and I think if you play like way too carefully in, in scrims, then you will play like even more careful on stage. I think you need to have like a balance where you play like aggressive on scrims and like limit test a bit. And then you will play like just a bit, a bit more careful on stage because that's yeah. a problem I used to have. In like mm -hmm. 2019, I was playing very disciplined in scrims, not dying. And then I went to stage and I was even playing even more careful. So then I was playing way, way too like careful, right? Yeah, you need so to push it a bit, yeah. Because yeah. you always play a bit more careful on stage. So I think it's important that you're a bit aggressive in scrims and then you just like tone it a bit. And uh, then down. you played really safe for a while and then we had the narrative that you were too safe. So oh, you yeah. can't win, Lars. You have to go too aggressive I can't remember that narrative, but I, I, for sure it was serious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to remind you of it then. Uh, let's take a look at the bracket then. So Misfits now falls down to the lower bracket, the loser bracket rather. Uh, their position though depends on the result of tomorrow because they were third seed. Um, if Fnatic were to lose, uh, that means that Fnatic would jump to the next round and that would mean that Misfits is going to play immediately against uh, XL or Vitality's winner. Though it depends on the result really. But um, Treats, what do you think about Misfits and a possible run through the loser bracket? I mean, I would say a complete run through of the loser bracket would be hard. I think the first round, uh, like winner of XL Vitality, Misfits has a chance to beat. I think whoever comes after that would be very tricky for them on paper. I think that Rogue, uh, you guys like showed their flaws pretty well today as well in the series. Our flaws? No, their Misfits. flaws. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I think that their flaws got exposed a bit, so I think that other teams can just copy it and run with it. Uh, so I would say that it's tricky for Misfits, but what do you they... think about the flaws, Misfits? <laughs> I mean, I think in general, like if you pick if you pick away their early comfort champs, so they don't have a lot of pressure in early game, they kind of crumble. I think if they don't have Jinx, they kind of crumble. Yeah, so yeah. I think if they don't have these consistent carries for their team, they don't really have champions to fill that gap. I think it's kind of simple, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think the Colt has been doing super well as well. Uh, they have been like drafting so well, and they're also like scaling. They have like usually, I think there's picking a lot of scaling and winning for your scaling, which is kind of what we used to do, and we still do quite a bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I've, yeah, I mean, I think if you just don't let them like get a monster scaling comp and you're like too early game focus, it's like not kind of easy to win against them, I think. Uh, I think they will have a rough time in the lower bracket, but we, we'll mm -hmm. see. Do you think that they obviously then have a harder time against um, teams that are able to be creative in draft? I don't want to say creative, but it feels like you guys in the series, you're picking against them more than kind of what your game plan was before that it seemed like. Is that the way it was or not? Uh, not really. Uh, okay. It's not like we went in best of five and like practiced like specific comps for Misfits. Mm -hmm. I think we, we barely talked about them too much. We, like, we just talked about like what they like to play, I guess, and like ban it maybe, like Jinx, we ban it right every game. Uh, because that's like an easy win condition for them. But otherwise, we were just playing like... We would play the same comps against another team, right? Oh, and like okay. play the same way. Okay, I mean like when their draft came out, you know, for instance, that you, you were reacting pretty well. Yeah. That's was what we were saying at the Alice I mean, desk, I, at I least. I saw, like, for example, they went one time the Syndra and Zaya, and you guys just went for long-range comp with Azir yeah. and Jace. Like, that's kind of obvious, right? But yeah. I think that's not something that they would adapt in, so I think that gives a lot of credit to you guys as well for actually adapting properly. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. Just honor Freddy, I guess. <laughs> honor, <laughs> yeah, Freddy. honor Freddy. Coach, yeah, we team. always do. Um, so, uh, in terms of the matchups in the playoffs tomorrow, we have Fnatic versus G2, and you'll be facing the winner of that. Larson, what do you think of this matchup, and who's going to win? Uh, I think Fnatic will win, right? I mean, that's like the, probably what most people think, and that's what I think as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, for Screams, I mean, there's been some talk about Fnatic being really bad in Screams, oh. uh, right? I mean, Perk said it on, the, on, yeah. on yeah. stream. Uh, but I think both teams have been quite similar in scrims, and uh, usually F Fnatic has been bad, quite bad in scrims, but uh, I think they were doing quite well like, the past few days, and uh, I guess scrims doesn't matter anyway. But, uh, <laughs> so I'm not sure why I'm talking about scrims, it doesn't matter anyway, I guess, but uh, I think Fnatic will take it from, uh, uh, from the strengths I've seen uh, in scrims at least. Okay, um, and would you rather face Fnatic or G2? Uh, uh, I don't mind. Uh, I guess G2 is a bit easier maybe uh, from our perspective, because we planned twice in regular split and it was very easy against, like very, very easy against. Mm -hmm. So I guess we have a bit more confidence against them. Uh, so I, I would say G2, yeah. Yeah, do you agree with him? You said, I think, uh, oh, you weren't on the desk, but I asked the two analysts before uh, who's going to win the whole split and they both said Fnatic. So oh. the copium is on there. Yeah, I mean, if I had to pick Fnatic or G2, I would definitely choose G2. I think Fnatic always feels like, even when they have a bad game, 
their like potential is really high, but I don't feel like the same potential is there with G2, if that makes sense. But you said G2 would win, I think, just did now. I? Yeah, you did. Yeah. I think it was Lapsus. Oh, okay. Well, I, I didn't mean that, yeah. I do think <laughs> Fnatic will win like uh, most people. I think that G2, like their average is pretty good as well. And same with Fnatic, like their average games are pretty good. But I think that Fnatic has that slight edge that G2 doesn't really have. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, furthermore, um, how do you feel about the entire playoffs as kind of the, the final question? Because our big narrative is oh, yeah. uh, Rogue, regular season kings. By the way, really sick that you got first place once again. But yeah. th the question is like now, is this the season or the split where you can win? If you look at the field of competition, what do you think? I mean, I've always said we can win, right? I mm -hmm. mean, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, obviously, I would say we will win, uh, but I mean, we'll see what happens. It's, I think it's anyone's game, uh, kind of. I mean, maybe not, maybe not, actually. I feel like maybe uh, as a fanatic or the strongest, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, going into players, I thought maybe it's anyone's game, but for my feeling is that as a fanatic or the strongest, uh, and it's going to be either us to lift the trophy. Okay. That's uh, my feeling, yeah. All right, cool. We've seen that before, that final. Fanatic yeah. Rogue? Yeah. I don't think so. Oh, no, we haven't, actually. Would that would be a good one. Yeah, actually. that would be a banger. A, yeah. good, a banger that we haven't had yet. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rogue Lift and Trophy. Which yeah, I, I was thinking <laughs> about another important. best of five between you two that maybe we yeah. don't need to talk about necessarily. Uh, thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> My bad. Oh, My bad. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much, Larson. Good luck, of course. I'd like to take a selfie with you as well, uh, although we have to, to keep to regard how safe you can be. I can't speak. I'll can first. you feel a bit? Street? OK, I'll uh, narrate this selfie, guys. Okay, if he's good pulling out the phone. Wait, I see her, I guess? Yeah. I'll stand up. She's walking towards Larson. I'm also on my way. Wait, I win? Yeah, you can stand. We We're keeping keep distance. Keeping distance. <laughs> All right, you ready? Yes. And a great selfie was taken. Very nice, very nice. Awesome. It's like I'm David Adam. Do you want to just LEC. send us out, Treats? I can. Um, so, well. Read. Or read. You can read that. Yeah, of course I can, yeah. So guys, that's all from us uh, for tonight, but we'll be back tomorrow with an epic clash between Fnatic and G2 Esports, which you don't want to miss. And until then, there's more League of Legends with the LCS Super Week, starting tonight with TL facing Golden Guardians. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Bye! <laughs> Bye! <laughs>